Now, we've been revisiting the conspiracy against His Imperial Majesty. No doubt you have seen this picture and other pictures from that time, that very significant and little spoken of and misunderstood time in prophecy and history, the conspiracy against his imperial majesty. And what we've been seeking to do amongst other brothers is to take notes, you know, take notes on the haters of the King of Kings and his Christ. And now, this particular picture here is significant. Now, over here, we're just going to share this with you. Emperor Haile Selassie, they say, was deposed on September 12, 1974. Other sources say September 11th. The question is whether it was a leap year or not. And they say he was driven away from the OW or Jubilee Palace in the back of a Volkswagen. And we touched on Volkswagen and the symbology of the V and double V or double double U. But really, it's double V, double V, V is six, double V or double V is 666, six, six, and that's the logo for Volkswagen. And we've learned that the CIA and the Illuminati and CIA is connected with Skull and Bones, see the movie Good Shepherd, and then behind that, you know, they connect to the Nazis, and, you know, the Nazis were connected to the, the axis of evil and the fascists, Benito Mussolini, and they're all enemies and conspirators against Christ because they're all seeking to stop the rise of the woolly-haired, you understand, Messiah. And no doubt you recall that Revelation is very clear about the woolly hair, and so is the book of Daniel where it says, I beheld to the thrones were placed, and one that was ancient of days did sit, his raiment as white as snow, and the hair of his head like pure wool. If we look at the Hebrew or Jewish footnotes, and basically says pure wool, or better, spotless wool. And we see the living image of his majesty, and you can see spotless wool. You understand? Know Woolly hair, white like wool, so forth and so on. Now, this is a significant picture here of his majesty covering his face, because this is the time when the conspiracy was underway, and his only faithful servant was this one, um, chamber aide who stayed with him in those final days and remained faithful to the King of Kings. In fact, you'll find that those who have true and good memories of the King of Kings, they tend to be poor, humble, and righteous people in the sense that they tend to be true Christians. Those who have all these wild and imaginary and make-up stories and lies and deception, they had something to gain, and they lost it all. But right here, His Majesty, where it says um, he was driven, he was put in the back of the Volkswagen as citizens of the capital, really CIA agents, shouted, labor, 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 or thief. That's why they like Labor Day. He was held in a room in Minulik's palace and never seen in public again. Well, that's not quite true because here he has been seen and there's many witnesses who have seen him after the transformation. They know it's him. You know saying? Except he is not called Hila Selassie or will not allow himself to be called because they, they slander, they, 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 they blaspheme that name. He is known as Abba Kedus, who is Kedus Abba Tachin. But let's go back to their story. Let's, let's check out their story. They say he died on August 28, 1975. And they say he was buried in an unmarked grave on the palace grounds. In fact, they said that they buried him three times. Even very recently, they tried to bury him, but the bones were too large and some of the members of the family protested. It's just a, one, one big bone lie because we have the proof. This is just one very, very obvious proof, you understand, of his imperial majesty that, that he lives. But here's the point about this picture right here, this particular picture. Right Now I'm going to read something, and I want you to look at this particular picture while I read this right here. And this is from the book of um, 
Hosea. And the book of Hosea has something very interesting in Hosea chapter 5. Hosea chapter 5 says right here, the withdrawn face of Jehovah, of Yahweh, he who is who he is. It begins off saying, hear ye this, O priests. And when you learn how the Ethiopian so-called orthopedic, I mean orthodox priest betrayed his majesty, you will understand why prophecy begins with them. Hear ye this, O priest, hearken ye house of Israel, and give ye ear, O house of the king, the so-called royal family. For judgment is towards you, because you have been a sneer on Mitzpah, and a net spread upon Tabor. And the revolters, I want to show you this while we read this, and the revolters are profound to make slaughter. Remember the Red Terror? Though I have been a rebuker of them all. It goes on to say, I know Ephraim, the Afa, Afarim, and Israel is not hid from me. For now, o Ephraim, thou committed whoredom, and Israel is defiled. I will not frame their doings to turn to their God. For the spirit of whoredoms, they wonder why it's mad she didn't respond to them, that madness, is in the midst of them. And they have not known Yahweh. They have not known a Gizyabi or Lotus of Hot. And the pride of Israel doth testify to his face. Therefore shall Israel and Ephraim fall in their iniquity. Black people, Ethiopians at home and abroad. Judah also shall fall with them. Look at the state of niggers in America, so-called African-Americans. They shall go with their flocks and with their herds to seek the Lord, but they shall not find him. He hath withdrawn himself. Abba Caduce hath withdrawn himself from them. They have dealt treacherously against the Lord, for they have begotten strange children. Hmm. Now shall a month devour them with their portions. Footnote, Red Terror. Blow ye the cornet in Gibeah, and the trumpet in Arama. Cry aloud in Beth Avin, or Beth Haven. After thee, O Binyam, O Benjamin, Ephraim shall be desolate in the day of rebuke. Among the tribes of Israel have I made known that which shall surely be. The princes of Judah were like them that remove the bond, the bound, the boundaries. Look at, look at the African American, the black man in America. Therefore, I will pour out my wrath upon them like water. Remember the 60s? Remember the water hoses? Remember Katrina? Ephraim is oppressed, downpressed, and broken in judgment. Africa, the Afar, that region, you understand? Because he willingly walked after the commandment. Nobody forced him. Therefore will I be to Ephraim as a moth, and to the house of Judah as a rottenness. <laughs> You can really, when you know who's who, you can really break this down, and, and it's amazing. But here's the part. This is why I focus on this particular picture right here of his majesty in the last days. When Ephraim saw his sickness and Judah saw his wound, then went Ephraim to the Assyrian and sent to King Jareb, yet could he not heal you. It's like the Ethiopians, one time they went to Russia, to communism, socialism. That didn't heal them. Nor cure you of your wound. For I will be to Ephraim as a lion, even the lion of Judah, and as a young lion to the house of Judah, to we African American. I, even I, this is Bible right here, I and I, will tear and go away. And I will take away, and none shall rescue him. You wonder why that region of the world, both the, the 
Ethiopian Hebrews, the Ethiopian at home and abroad, Ethiopians and Ethiopia and the Ethiopian Hebrews over here, the niggas over here in America, they've been trying all sort of programs. Other people come from backward countries and they make it overnight. Some of them make, they, they prosper. Niggas be, oh, it's the white man, it's the white man. No, there's a sickness, there's a rottenness. Here's the verse, verse 15. I will go and return to my place till they acknowledge their offense. But Ethiopians at home and abroad don't want to repent. Solomon said, if one would repent and turn to the Lord, he would turn away all those curses. But they don't want to admit that they did something wrong, very wrong, something that no other nation, no other people have ever done anything like what they did to his majesty. No other people, especially when you have a king, a king of kings, a loving father who, who basically picked them up from nothing and raised Ethiopia to international status and prominence and self-sufficiency, and then they do that to he? I will go and return to my place. But what place is that? Notice this right here. I will go and return to my place. He went to Caduce Estefano Spates of Christian. Till they acknowledge their offense and seek my face. In their affliction, they will seek me early. And you see, I think the Satanists know this. This is why they keep, like, throwing throwing charity dollars and helping out and do a telethon. And, oh, these poor people, do something for them. Why are they going through this? Well, they cause it on themselves. And this word of prophecy is very, is very, very accurate. You understand? See his benevolent, sublime, humble majesty. I will go and return to my place till they acknowledge their offense and seek my face. In their affliction will they seek me early. Remember, this chapter over here in Hosea, and Hosea means salvation. Hosea is the second part of Jehoshua or Yahoshua, contracted as Yeshua. And here in chapter 5, you understand, it speaks of the withdrawn face of Jehovah. It talks about the slaughter, the red terror. You know what I'm saying? It basically breaks down everything that happened in these days. Repent. Ethiopians, repent, Israel, repent, evil world, before it's too late. To my brothers, Shalom, Rastafari.